Police officers of Reddit, who's the smartest criminal you've ever encountered? I worked with this one guy who had a lengthy record. He had a system for getting released if he got caught. After committing a crime, if the police were in pursuit and he knew he was about to be cornered, he would act insane. His girl would play along with it telling the police that he was off his medication. The police would arrest him but then send him to a mental ward with papers instructing the ward to release to police once he was cleared. Once he was in the mental ward, he would cause a distraction that would make the person attending the desk with the file cabinet to leave said cabinet. He would then crawl to the file cabinet, look for his release to police papers, and then would literally eat the papers. When the psych evaluators decided that he was stable enough to be released, there would be no instructions to send him to the police, and he would be released to the general public. He did this about 10 times until police officers noticed him back on the streets. This stunt forced the state to change their procedure for detaining mentally unstable suspects. My favorite was the guy who stole a post office mailbox off the street, repainted it, and then put it next to the night deposit box at a bank, and hung an out of order sign on the deposit box. All the businesses came along and dropped off their deposits in the mailbox. A guy I went to high school had been stealing from Walmart in a pretty clever way. He would grab video games, mp3 players, beer etc. and throw them away in a trash can in the garden section. The workers never checked the trash contents and he would just wait, sometimes 5 hours until they emptied the trash in the back dumpster and hop in to get his items. Once he took a cardboard box from a display inside, filled it with video games, a PS3, and extra controllers. He grabbed some tape and pens and drew all over the box and taped it up to make it look used and tossed it. An hour later he had a whole new PS3 and stack of games. I'm not a cop but I worked crime scene. This guy had attached GPS to the bottom of people's cars who owned houses. He wanted to rob. He did it to ensure they wouldn't be showing up while he was ransacking the place. I heard about one person that pulled a shoplifting scam on a large, popular and well-known US retail store. They walked in with some cheap nylon product to get one of those I walked in with the stickers they used to put on returning merchandise. The sticker easily peeled off the product undamaged. They walked to the electronics department, grabbed an expensive box off the shelf and went to customer service. They placed the sticker on the big box and asked if they could return the item without a receipt. Unfortunately, no, not without the original receipt. Dang it, and they walk out. Customer service even gave the doorman the thumbs up having just interacted with the customer. This took place before widespread inventory controls and cameras absolutely everywhere. I feel like I would remember what I had and hadn't recently put a sticker on, but perhaps I wouldn't be getting paid enough to worry too much about it. I remember an officer telling me about a BND alarm he and his team responded to. No one was there to report the alarm. It must have been a security monitoring company that called. When police showed up, everything seemed normal, most lights were off, and there was an employee still working. Explained he was there working late and must have set off an alarm. They almost believed him until he said UHH before saying the name of the company he worked for. After that it was downhill but with a little more research he would have pretty much gotten away with it. I don't care how long I've been working for a company, I'd probably still say I with my dumb boss too. I'll be sure not to loiter around any crime scenes now. There's one guy I recently dealt with who is on parole. I stopped him in my city after he was looking to buy drugs. Usually people come from all over to buy drugs and then leave. I issue him a warning and let him go as it's pretty common and he sang like a bird regarding the people he was trying to buy from. Anyway, the next day, I got a call from his parole officer who says he was alerted the guy was pulled over and wanted to verify that it was his guy that I stopped. I'm a little confused at first but he goes on to say that the day before, he was scheduled to meet with him but he had an excuse and bailed. His excuse was that he was in the hospital. Well when he spoke with him the following day, he was able to provide documentation that he had entered the hospital day 1 and had left day 2. Well I had stopped him at 115 in the morning and after looking at the picture, it was 100% him. Turns out the guy had checked in then out of the hospital on day 1, then in and out again on day 2. He then rearranged half the paperwork to make it look like he was in the hospital overnight which would make my car stop off him appear like I mixed him up with someone else as well as give him a valid excuse to miss their meeting. 
Not sure what's gonna happen to that guy but I thought it was pretty clever. This was in the late 90s early zeros. A guy in my dorm came to school solely to deal drugs. He took out student loans. Registered for a bunch of 300 person freshman survey courses where he would never be missed. Then literally never went to class. All he did was go to raves and concerts and keggers and sell party drugs. After the first semester, he was suspended. He wrote the usual I was young and dumb and in over my head sob story, and got put on probation for a semester, so he had a repeat of the fall. At the end of the year, he was kicked out, and didn't care. He made something on the order of $150k, in return for about $8k in student loans to cover a year of housing and tuition. So far as I know, he was never caught. It may have been a short-sighted maneuver in the long run, but in the short run it seemed fairly genius to effectively use federal loans to start your drug business. Working in a home improvement store when younger, this guy came in, went to the snowblowers, took one and went to the return desk. Said he wanted to return it but had no receipt. They told him you need a receipt so he says okay I'll be back and wheels it off to car through the front door. He did this a few times apparently. Couple places even helped him load it back into his car. Most of them are really stupid so this guy isn't a criminal mastermind but here goes. He wanted to rob a jewelers on our city's main street. So he found out the flat beside the jewelers was empty and he hid there. For two weeks he triggered the alarm on purpose several times a night. Massive headache for the police and the business. We turned up to see nothing there. Nothing on cameras. Thought it was just a fluke so the jewelers turned off the alarm system and said they'd wait until the morning to get a new one installed or that one rewired because something wasn't right. As soon as he heard that and the police leaving he tore down the wall. Had already been working on this apparently. And robbed the place taking his sweet time. Escaped without anyone noticing anything for hours, until the jewelers came back in the morning. Then he tried to resell something he stole which had a serial number on it and got caught. So not that smart after all. Good effort though. He did all the hard work pretty well. There's a golf course country club in my town that has a PGA tournament scheduled in the next couple years. They have a guy repeatedly breaking in overnight and just lounging around and eating food, all on camera. The club refuses to report it so they don't hurt their chances of the tournament coming. Like some kinda movie comedy plot. Chaotic neutral. Worked at a jail. After getting off work, I watched an ex-inmate, homeless, being released. He walked over to a patrol car, looked me in the eye, and the elbowed the window in. He was walked back to the entrance and rebooked in. It was middle of January. He didn't want to get too cold. Not only does he stay warm through the winter, he is also provided with 3 hot meals and a bed. I would do the same if I found myself homeless and jobless. A French thief who spent 10 years in prison became a comedian when he got out. One of his stories. Finds a building. Goes in. Chooses a floor and transforms the exit door into an extra apartment. Puts the apartment number. Fake lock. Welcome rug. Etc. Puts an iPhone for sale. The person comes to buy it, he opens the door in a shower robe and says give me one second. I am just gonna count the money, and poof. He's gone from the exit stairs. This seems like exactly the kind of crime a comedian would commit. A friend of my brother moved to Israel where for a period of time it was as acceptable to drive with an American driver's license. He was pulled over for speeding, and when asked for his license, gave the officer his Costco card. Costco is a membership based retail warehouse in the US and a few other countries. The exchange apparently went something like this. Officer. Costco? What is Costco? Friend. It's the state I'm from. Officer. That sounds made up. Friend. There are lots of states you probably haven't heard of. Have you heard of Arkansas? How about Idaho? Officer. I guess not. Friend. Well I'm from the small state of Costco. The officer didn't have a response and wound up writing the ticket to someone with a Costco driver's license. Friend framed the ticket and still has it hanging on his wall. One guy would print barcodes, bring them into Home Depot and stick them on merchandise in the $100 range. When scanned the items came up around the $10 range. Putting random barcodes on things isn't really illegal and super hard to notice. Guy 2 would come in an hour later and buy the underpriced stuff. 
complete plausible deniability. They would then sell the stuff on eBay. Only reason they got caught is because the guy with the barcode printer software cut the second guy out of the operation so guy 2 stole a bunch of barcodes, put them on the merchandise and paid for it immediately afterwards. He then proceeded to rat on the first guy and spilled the beans they had been doing this on a weekly basis for over 4 years. Because we could only pin the one case on him, the burglary was dropped down to a pretty theft and he walked away with a few days in county and a small fine. Dude probably took home the put for tens of thousands over the years. Probably someone who committed a crime I never solved. With that being said I had a guy use a sledgehammer to smash his way through a wall at a Best Buy and steal a bunch of phones and cameras. He was smart enough to wear gloves and a face mask and not touch anything he didn't have to. Alarms didn't go off until he exited out the back door, which the alarm company gets after a minute or two and takes them like 3 stroke 4 minutes to call into us, giving him a good 5 minute head start so he was probably a few miles away before we got dispatched to it. He clearly scoped out the area before doing his deed too. Smart dude. I just keep thinking about Sledge from Rainbow Six Siege. Not a police officer, but was in Ra in college. My university owned all the houses adjacent to campus. These were ran like dorms, with Ra's and the same rules which included a very strict no alcohol policy. It was a privilege to live in the houses, and priority was given to upperclassmen who were more likely to bend that rule because they were of age and it was harder to police off campus in houses. There was a student who went around knocking on doors saying something like I'm in Ra and housing director's name sent me for health and wellness checks she'd find their booze take it and follow up with how she's doing them a favor by just giving them a warning she wasn't actually in ra and was just keeping the booze for herself the only reason she got found out was because she did it to an actual ra the ra was male they kept men and women housing separate and just assumed he didn't know her because of that it was only later he questioned why they had a female doing wellness checks on male housing they did an investigation and asked other residents. Incidents dated back previous two years. Never found out who it was. Yar ass aren't actually allowed to go through our room. They come in, see no fire hazards. They aren't even allowed to open the fridge or any boxes or anything. As long as it isn't out in the open we're good. Here's one. I knew this guy back in the early 80s. Let's call him Jim. Well he really wanted this high powered superbike but he knew he couldn't ever afford it. So what he did was to take drive to London and scout it about for a few days until he found that particular model parked outside a house. He goes back that night with a sled hammer, pulls the lock, and steals the bike. He gets it home, puts it in his garage and completely strips it so that the only thing left is the frame and the bottom half of the engine, which he drags into the weeds at the bottom of his garden. Then he pours fuel over it and burns it a bit. A few weeks pass and weeds have started growing over it. It's at that point he calls the cops and reports that someone had dumped a bike frame in his garden. The cops show up and he explains that he just got back from being away and found it. The cops take the frame and note down high name and address. A few days later, the cops call him and say that the bike had been stolen from London a month or so ago, from the serial number on the bottom half of the engine and frame, and that the insurance company had classed the bike as a write-off, and had told the cops to dispose of it. Now, because the frame was found in his garden and the insurance company didn't want it, the cops were duty bound to ask him if he wanted to keep it, or if they should throw it. So he tells them that he'd always wanted to build a bike. He gets the fame back from them, repaints it, then puts it all back together and re-registers it as a Q-Reg. Stolen and recovered. I forgot to call him Jim didn't I? I always laugh when somebody names a character and then proceeds to never use the name. Nice catch. Same thing as the computer rooms. Guys would cut the power to electrical stations damage the wiring then hide waiting for the cops to show up. Once the owners of the buildings came they would shut off the power because of the unsafe wiring that would have to be repaired in the morning. Everyone would leave for the night, then then would cut away all the non-powered wiring to get the copper. Not a policeman here, but I have a nice story from insurance debt collectors. There was this guy who was already in heaps of debt, like more than a lifetime's worth of debt. He proceeded to file several policy reports for identity theft up to the point that he got protected from financial checkups. 
It was a temporary measure that were given to repeated identity theft victims. At the same time he had reported fake income to the IRS for the last couple of years to between 40 to 60 millions depending on the year. So when he applied for credit cards and loans, they were unable to check his financial credit due to the identity theft protection. But they checked his tax returns which showed he had a massive income, got his loans and credit cards, emptied them out and left the country. That's a good way to finance emigrating out of a third world country. I used to run bars at a number of venues around the north of England, one of which was Chester Racecourse. Usually, we'd just have to keep an eye out for scousers trying to nick drinks or sneak in without paying, and with it being so close to Liverpool there was a fair amount of security on site. You could tell them, as they'd be suited, booted, a high vis waistcoat on and usually carrying a radio. Now there were a dozen or so bars dotted around the course, and you can imagine the amount of money that was taken from a hundred thousand or so punters drinking steadily from 11 until 8 or 9 in the evening. So every hour or so, the security would go round the bars in turn and take all the high denomination notes from each till and stick them in the safe in the main building. So I'm stood there one day, pulling pints doing the barman thing. The security blokes have been round a few times and it's getting steadily busier. Then one bloke shows up on his own, high vis on and radio in his hand, does the till, leaving the usual receipt so we can balance up at the end of the meeting. Bit early I think, but hey ho, I've got plenty to do. Then 10 minutes or so later, two more blokes show up, dressed the same. Oh, your mate's just been here, I said. No need to touch that just yet. What mate we're the only two doing this duty today? Cue a rapid fire and increasingly panicked exchange over the radio. Matey boy who'd done the till before used to work there apparently. So he knew the drill and he'd been watching the guards and knew just when to time it and what order they were going round the bars in. Apparently he got round 9 or 10 before he decided not to push his luck any further and walked away with. About 80 grand we heard later. Just took off the high vis. Dumped that and the radio and he's just one more guy in a suit and a crowd of thousands. They were a bit stricter on the procedure after that. Colon. There's a small tourist town where I grew up that is divided in half by a big river. The only way between the two sides is over a long bridge. Unless you go all the way around another mountain pass. These guys called in, like, 2-3 bomb threats to a posh hotel on one side of the bridge. I think they even left some dummy packages. All the police went across the bridge to do crowd control, etc, etc. The guys then called in a bomb threat on the bridge, and started robbing stuff on the other side. The police couldn't be positive the bomb threat was real or not and hesitated long enough to give the thieves a head start. If it was my town I'd put police stations on both sides, but that would probably cost more money than they have. Not a cop. We got called for a rollover car accident. We get there and the car is empty so we think he got ejected. My partner and I start looking for a body nearby. A few minutes later a cop tells us that they think the driver is a mile down the road walking. We go check on him and he tells us he's fine but he wasn't driving the car. He also didn't know who was driving the car. And he had clearly been drinking. During the ride to the air. He told me that as long as the cops don't find you and in the car, the local do won't pursue drunk driving charges. All you had to do was get out of the car and walk away from it. A couple of my friends from high school, they were brothers, stocked shelves worked in the back during the night, right around when the PS4 was released. They mostly emptied a big bag of dog food and stuck two or three playstations in there, resealed it and waited a few days to buy that bag from the back. Comma learns about smartest criminals. Comma becomes smartest criminal himself. The smartest criminals are the ones the cops don't know about. Married men of Reddit. What was that dumb thing you did during your dating phase that you can't believe your wife ended up overlooking? I get very nervous around women that are into me and especially when I know she's watching me do something. Even something trivial. On an early date, we went to the local shop to pick up some things for a picnic, including some gum. I was thinking really hard and aware that I was being watched. I had this. Money on the counter. Gum in your mouth. Money on the counter. Gum in your mouth. Easy. Suffice to say when I put the gum on the counter and the 2 euro coin in my mouth. The cashier was baffled and my girlfriend, now wife, was crying with laughter. Turned her down when she suggested we go on a date. 
Readers, I'm super awkward. I was working for Starbucks, she was a regular customer. I was new in town and noticed her a couple times, she was a regular customer and we got to some small talk, chatting about places to eat. She said there's an amazing taco place down the road, we should go sometime. I misheard her, thinking she said you should go sometime. I replied with I'll definitely check it out I handed her a drink and she left very awkwardly. She was back in the next day and, against all odds, I was able to clear up the misunderstanding and I wrote my number on her Starbucks cup. We went to that taco place for our first date and she was right. It was amazing. Three years married and two kids later. Really glad she saw through my awkwardness. I forgot her name once when introducing her to a friend. This was maybe a month into our relationship. I was all like, hey and by the way this is, uh, my girlfriend. I have ADD, and every now and then my brain pulls a stunt like this. My mom was the same. As kids we'd get called by the name of one of our dogs now and then. I thought it was hilarious, my sister not so much. Not my story, but my parents. Some backstory. My dad has a brother who's only a couple years older. Growing up, they'd commonly try to steal food off each other's plates just to be buttholes to each other. This was remedied by plate guarding and offensive maneuvers with utensils if hands got too close. On my parents first date, my mom reached for something to try off my dad's plate and he instinctively stabbed her hand with his fork, drew blood and everything. He was obviously mortified, glad my mom was crazy enough to keep dating, marry, and procreate with a fork stabber. On our second date, I arrived 1h late, when I went to greet her with a little hug. Yep, that's how we greet people around here. I accidentally knocked her phone off her hand. It hit the ground and cracked the screen, but I wasn't sure if it was already cracked. I apologized. She said it was okay and that the screen was already like that before. Almost a year later she confessed that I actually broke her phone that day. She had just gotten it from her mom. All phones she ever had were second hand, very simple ones, and she couldn't afford a new one at the time, but still she lied and kept using the broken phone so I wouldn't feel bad. My heart sank. We've been married for 2 years now and I've given her a brand new flagship phone every year ever since. True consumerist love. Sent from my iPhone 11. Wife was a devout animal lover and activist. Planned proposal at a fancy Tokyo restaurant that only takes 3 tables a night and has 11 courses. Which was filled with all sorts of innovative things so you're never quite sure what's coming next. In between one of the courses the chef brings out a cute little glass bowl for us to play with some squid. The chef informs us these are firefly squid that's local to the bay. My wife is delighted and practically named them. Two courses later they reappeared, as entrees, floating on a glass plate lit up from below and arranged to look like they're swimming. She still said yes but have never let me forgot that I took her on literally the worst dining experience she had, and I had paid the most ever for. Played weird LCDs non-stop for a 6 hour car trip to the beach. She didn't ditch me but haven't been allowed to play Weird Al in her presence for the past 24 years. Got tickets to see him this year on our anniversary and knew better than to ask her to join me so I took a couple of my kids that appreciate the finer things in life. Best anniversary gift ever. Great show. Soon to be wife here. When we first met, it was during an introduction class or something like that. He kept kissing the titches butt and talking were I right too much and just being kind of a show off. I wanted to punch him in the face. Come to find out he's in almost all my classes and for lunch a couple of girls and I decided to go to McDonald's he invited himself. I was annoyed. Two months into our relationship he confessed that he saw me and was intrigued and wanted to get to know me so he did everything to get my attention. He's an extrovert. I'm an introvert. I'm surprised he managed to actually get my attention. We've been together for 10 years getting married on the 23rd of September. On my first date with my wife, we got to talking about tattoos. I have a rule that if I have an idea for a tattoo, I sit on it for a while to see if I really would still want it. I mentioned this to her and explain how glad I am that I do this because otherwise I'd be covered in tool, the band, tattoos or some other dumb crap. She rolled up her sleeve to show me that she had the lyrics to one of their songs tattooed across her arm. Well you did tell her you liked the band and wanted to tattoo them on your body at some point. That's way better than having to show your tool lyric tattoo to someone who doesn't even know the band. 
Five years ago, after dating for two weeks, I accepted a job offer on another continent. I told her we didn't know each other well enough for me to pass up an opportunity like that and if it was meant to be, it would work itself out. Well, it was meant to be and we got married this spring. We had a couple great dates and things were looking promising. Then I got super busy at work and didn't contact her for about three and a half weeks without giving her a heads up. She decided to move during this time. After things calmed down at work I text her again. We worked things long distance and finally got married. She reminds me that I didn't ask her out again for a very long time every few months. My husband kept calling me by the name of his previous girlfriend on our first date. I finally told him to give her a call because they clearly had unfinished business to talk about. He did and she reminded him why he was happy to have her out of his life. And he never called me by her name again. 40 years later and it seems to have worked out in my favor. Nicely handled. My husband broke my thumb one night when we were slightly tipsy. Horseplay got too rough and I think, drunk memory, he slammed my hand against something. We both heard the pop and I went to tears. Holy crap, that must have been one heck of an awkward night. Not the married man but on probably our third or fourth date, my man, mixed our soups. I got a watermelon gazpacho, a cold soup, and he got a seafood bisque. I am a sharer so we both tasted and didn't love mine but we loved his. After the tasting, he boldly yet nervously states mine is so great, I got this while pouring our two soups into one. It was the worst lukewarm thing I've ever tasted. Five years later and we've never mixed soups again. Too risky. This would make me believe my date was some sort of psychopath. There's no reason that even two good soups of similar theme should be mixed. It defeats the entire freaking purpose of ordering a specific soup. Accidentally set her hair on fire with a match while lighting a cigarette. Not good. We are still married 29 years later. I don't smoke anymore. Reminds me of the story my grandpa told me. On his first date with my grandma, he wanted to see exactly how flammable hairspray was. She wears a lot, and he held up a match near her hair. She had a bit of hair missing for a while. I wouldn't have been out 100%. His dumbass antics have drastically declined though. Not me, but my first door neighbor's story. I didn't know their story until one day another friend told me what happened, and she confirmed it. She was at a party, and caught him looking at her every now and then. She kinda liked him so she decided to make the first move. She took a few shots for courage and went in. As time passed by she continued to drink while talking to him, and got pee drunk. Like not being able to walk drunk. He was a type of guy that didn't drink that much at all, and presumed she can drink a lot. But when she stood up from couch after few hours the alcohol swept her to the ground. So as a gentleman he offered to carry her home. Note that was when we were late teens. No car, no money. So he started Pidgey back her home. That was like 30-45 mins walk. Like normal sober walk. He managed to carry her on his back about 500 meters from her home. And stopped to take a break for a moment. His back hurt him AF. So he decided to carry her in his arms. A few steps away. And he notices very unpleasant smell. Since he iced from our parts and it was rural area. He asked barely conscious her what is that freaking stink. She just mumbled. I shat my pants. Then proceeded to pass out in his arms. Only coming back to mumble. Frick sorry. And passing out again. So what guy does? He brings her home and lies her on floor. Since he was afraid of messing up her bed or couch. And left home. But. Few moments after he comes. Back. Wakes her up and asks would she mind if he helped her shower. Since she can't sleep 8hl shut up. Mostly because it's not hygienic, safe, and her whole house and everything would smell, she agreed. And after he bathed her she asked him to sleep in her bed, in case she needed him. So one time I asked guy how the frick did he got over that. He said they clicked at the first glance, and he just felt that he needs to take care of her because he took responsibility to bring her home all alright. And if she said no to bathing he would back off, but then won't be with her. Cause crapping yourself while dead drunk is still understandable, but sleeping whole day like that would be too nasty. He laid beside her until she fell asleep, and then watched TV until she woke up. They were inseparable since then. Since that first date I have never seen them apart. It's been almost 15 years since then, and just recently they got beautiful little daughter.
So many stories of relationships that start this way, it's almost as if the poo in their pants becomes fertilizer for their growing love. Gross, yet beautiful. We drank a lot on our second date, Ubered home. Next day went back to get his car, and it wasn't there. He was so devastated. He just bought it recently and it was stolen. We filed a police report. Took forever and just generally sucked. We walked to his friend's house nearby, and there was his car. Perfectly unstolen. He drank so much he forgot he moved it before our date. Now, once in a while when we're trying to find our car in the grocery store parking lot or wherever, one of us will say it's stolen. Call the police. I was sitting on the couch as we were playing Wii Bowling. She was standing behind the couch, lovingly holding me. I draw back the Wii Wiimote and wham. I whack her in the face with the Wii Wiimote at full strength. Her mom was also in the room. Soon as I saw playing Wii I knew. I didn't really do it but I thought he would be weirded out anyways. Very first time he stayed at my house. After about 3 hours of my two male roommates trying to make him uncomfortable, we went to bed and he put his contacts in two shot glasses of water because he had no case with him. I don't know if that's a dumb thing to do. I've never warned them. Maybe we were drinking and that seemed like a good idea? Anyways, he had never had a pet and was kind of weirded out by my cat standing beside him and yell meowing at him all night. Is that normal? Is he mad at me or something? Woke up the next day to find out the cat drank all the water from the shot glasses. Contacts included. I had to help him home because he is seriously blind without them. He still wanted to see me again even though the night was weird. And the cat became his best friend. Despite some initial skepticism on both their parts. Comma he's seriously blind without them. Comma he wanted to see me again. Nice. Insisted that everything in San Francisco was walking distance from everything else, and decided we should walk from Pier 39 to Golden Gate Park. It is walkable, but not third date walkable, or whatever shoes she happened to be wearing that day walkable. As someone unfamiliar with San Francisco, I googled it. 6.5 miles apart, a 2 hour walk according to Google, and by the looks of it, a crap ton of hills. Google is giving me a warning I've never seen before that walking directions may not reflect real world conditions, and it looks like the elevation changes back and forth a couple hundred feet more than once. My uncle didn't call his now wife for over a year after they first met and he got her number. He kept the paper she wrote it on and ended up finding it and calling her asking if she still remembered him and was still interested in going on a date. So what you're saying is there's always a chance. Wife here, about 3 weeks into dating, my husband thought it would be romantic to pick me up and spin me around in his driveway. Unfortunately, it was not his most brilliant idea and he tripped and we fell right onto the concrete next to my car. Reader, he landed on top of me. You cushioned his fall, how sweet of you. I can tell you for him, we were leaving his new apartment, keep in mind we've been dating for a short amount of time. We haven't been through a lot of firsts yet. His apartment was on the back of the building so we had to walk through a small passage to get to the other side in order to leave. Imagine this passage is slightly shadowed but the light shoots through it so it creates this romantic silhouette. As we left his apartment and walked into this passage area he grabs my hand and pulls me towards himself. I'm thinking oh he is going to put my hand around his waist. How romantic. Locks my hand on his butt and loudly farts. It was a very brave move for a new couple. We've been married for 13 years now. Given the amount of fart related stories, I'm beginning to suspect that flatulence is actually a human mating call. Wife here, bit about 3 weeks into dating, my husband invited me to a house party at his best friend's place. We were playing beer pong having fun, the other team is up, they toss the ball. I lean forward to try to block it, my now husband extends his hand out in front of me at the same time. Catching the ball but at the same time hitting me in the eye and somehow pulling out 3 stroke 4 of my eyelashes. He felt terrible about it and tried to burn off his eyelashes in drunken sympathy. He hates when I bring it up but I think it is the funniest story. She was about to sneeze and she was sitting half on my lap so I kinda thought she was gonna sneeze on me and I'd ek what I was thinking but I put my hand up to block her sneeze except I had a glass in my hand and I blocked her own hand from covering her sneeze and instead she slammed her face into my glass. Married 6 years now, she still has all her teeth. 
I made myself a burger for dinner before heading over to her place to hang out. Unfortunately I'm not the best cook and left a little too much pink in that burger. While we were at her house I bet her I could fit through the doggy door and crawled right through. Then she immediately closed it behind me and we raced to the front door. She won and she locked it. Now at this exact moment my bowels decided they had enough of that burger from earlier and I felt my stomach cramp. Luckily I held it all in and ran back to the back door with my cheeks clenched and starting knocking desperately in the door. She was laughing at first but when she saw my face go suddenly serious and I said very calmly I need you to open the door. Now please. She unlocked the door and asked if I was okay. I told her to stay downstairs and turn the TV up loud. She agreed but was very confused. So I ran upstairs and then had one of the most violent shoots of my whole life. I thought the worst was behind me until I went to wipe. And of course no TP. So she took my instructions really well and when I yelled to her, texted her, and called her I got no answer. After probably like 10 missed calls she finally answered and I asked her to bring me some TP and leave outside the door and try not to breathe on the way upstairs. She was great about it and immediately started making fun of me when I came back downstairs. Now quite a few years later a couple kids and cat, she's still making fun of me. Man I was so expecting this story to end with you getting stuck in the doggy door and crapping your pants. We were taking a shower together and she was soaping up while I was under the hot water rinsing off and she slipped and instead of grabbing helping her I pulled away, thinking for some reason that I'd already rinsed off and didn't want to get soapy. Thank god she caught herself on the shower curtain and didn't get hurt. She was, I, uh, not happy. My explanation of my faulty thinking didn't help at all, either. We laugh about it now but it took some serious smoothing over at the time. Oh yay, it's not like you are in the shower and can't just rinse again. I know what my husband would say, because I still tease him to this day. We had been dating for two weeks and were spooning on his futon, watching a movie. Out of nowhere he says, I'm really sorry, I can't hold it in anymore, and rips a huge fart. My husband was a very clean, tight-knit, prudish kind of guy, so I couldn't help but let out the biggest laugh while he turned about as red as his beard little late to the party but here's my story when we had only been dating a month or so my then boyfriend went to pick me up i assume and accidentally threw my head through the ceiling and gave me a concussion he's six feet eight inches and just really misjudged the distance i also had a hard time getting used to his height and very regularly need him in the balls for about two years while cuddling so i think we're even we've been together six years now and proud to say we haven't injured each other in about four my first GF did that almost every time we cuddled too, but she was a sweetheart so it was alright. I had just started a job working with her and, unbeknownst to me at the time, her mom, her mom and I did not get along. My move was what's up with that thick B, insert name, she said oh, I'll tell my mom you said hi, I was dead, but hey here's we are married 16 years so. It wasn't until after we were married that my wife told me that I almost didn't get a second date because I talked with RRI too much during the movie. I don't really remember it but apparently I was leaning over every 30 seconds or so to tell her what I was thinking. Also, Valkyrie with Tom Cruise probably wasn't that great of a date movie, but it all worked out in the end. ETA, please forgive me my movie talking sins, everybody, I was a dumb teenager and she's really pretty, I was just quite anxious for things to go well. First date with my wife, end of the night I went to kiss her on the cheek being all sweet and crap, she thought I was leaning in for a hug and leaned in too, as she leaned in I turned my head and instead of her cheek I kissed her neck. Turned super red and embarrassed then goodbye and almost pushed her out of the door at my apartment. I immediately texted her sorry as well and she laughed. Three years into marriage she apparently didn't care. On our first dinner date, my husband ordered a crap ton of food to show me his favorites at an Indian restaurant. And forgot his wallet at home. And only discovered doing so when the check had arrived. Cleared me out well over a hundred bucks and he was absolutely mortified. But we've been married for near two years so. My card got declined on the first lunch date we went on. The bill was less than $20. I was freaking mortified. 15 years married now. When we were dating, my husband and I were holding hands when he had to cough. Instead of letting go of my hand and covering his mouth, 
he continued to hold on, brought it up to his mouth and coughed into my hand. It was a dry cough, if it was anything more I would have run. My girlfriend did this to me and is still horrified whenever I catch her about to do it again. I didn't ask her for her number the first time we hung out, knowing I may never see her again. My brother got it and I later got it from him. She had an Xbox and staying the night. She woke up to me playing some arcade hockey game and providing commentary of Google goal goal goal. Smile goalie. Told my then boyfriend at the time that I wanted to have sex for the first time and he made me wait until his Magic the Gathering tournament was over. I decided to not shave for a few months since I was going to be serving in the jungles of Ecuador and wanted to be a wild man. As it turns out, a thick, blonde neck but isn't very attractive. We met our first day of high school so there are many, my least, her families. Favorite is when I left her messages. This was before cell phones and her parents owned a business. They set their voicemail in a business manner in that you dial one for father, two for mother and so on. I found out later it was practice for their office line and that this line went to the same recording. No matter what, I left so many messages of call me ramblings. They were on vacation. Her, her four siblings and her parents listened to it all on speaker. In a van. We kept it secret for years. Until we didn't, it's never stopped. I got fairly intoxicated and decided to tie a towel around my shoulders while completely naked and run in front of her on FaceTime screaming look at my dangle. Yes, but she does remember you. When I kneeled to propose I landed on a sharp rock and we had to go to the ear because it lodged in my kneecap. Everything. Just, really everything. Our first kiss is the one that sticks out in my mind. We kissed and right as we kiss some air moves in my throat. Sounded like a burp but it wasn't. It seemed like I burped right into her mouth and I was mortified. She now knows it wasn't a burp, but at the time, not so much. I'm such a lucky fool and had some big blunders early while learning who I am and who she is. I'm lucky someone so wonderful saw past the stupid young person I was. I hate those esophagus gurgles. My wife and I get them. I get gut gurgles like that, too. Sounds like a fart, but it's just my stomach moving around. Transitioning from that uncomfortable to the comfortable phase, I was sitting across the room while she did homework. I farted pretty loudly and she looked me in the eyes and fired back. Luckily I had another in the chamber and asserted my dominance, to my surprise which she matched for a second time, but even louder. Having this all happen in a span of 2 seconds and thinking it was pretty funny, I tried to top her by forcing one more out to reign supreme. Well, let's just say it wasn't a fart I forced out. One of her favorite stories to tell close friends and family. We've been married for going on 4 years though, so I'll guess it all worked out for me. TLDR, crap yourself in front of potential mates if you wanna get married. No guts no glory. I'm the wife. Probably a year into us dating we fought about something neither of us can remember now. To make up for it he went and bought us both dessert which was a sweet gesture. Of course he went and did it right after dinner. So I was still full and said I would shower and eat it when I finished my shower. Well, when I was in the shower he decided for some godforsaken reason to eat the dessert he bought for me. After eating his own serving of it. Everyone who has heard the story is very surprised our relationship lasted after that night. I did bring it up in my vows as an example of how I'll love him even when it's not the easiest thing to do. P. When we were first dating. My husband had a massive night out drinking. I was trialing some antidepressant medication and was a ball of anxiety. Barely slept all night. I woke up to texts from him saying he had grabbed some bacon and egg rolls for breakfast but was locked out. But I got up and found him passed out in my doorway and he'd eaten both rolls. Sucker. I once spear tackled my then girlfriend out of misplaced enthusiasm in high school. I was excited to see her and handled it as badly as was possible. It was in front of a bunch of our friends and I ended up knocking the wind out of her and making her cry. That was about 17 years ago, and we're still together. I also licked my plate at a fancy restaurant because the salad dressing was so good. She still brings that one up every few years. Edit. My most upvoted comment ever is me recounting my most shameful relationship fails. The internet is weird. Plate lickers unite. So, basically you're a man puppy. 
the night I met my husband, he stared at me while I was sleeping. For 4 hours straight, it's been 3 years, he still stares at me until I scold him for it, then he waits until he thinks I won't notice and starts staring again. I love him to the moon and back, even though he'd sure as heck stare at me the entire trip. My gf does this all the time, although flattering, it's still pretty creepy to wake up to. Pet owners of reddit, what was the most intelligent thing your pet has done? When I was a kid, we had two dogs, a Pyrenean Shepherd, and a Labrador Retriever. The Retriever was a goofy idiot, but the Shepherd was smart. One day, the Retriever gets loose, we had to tie him up in the yard because he kept chasing things and running away, and the Shepherd runs after him. We never even realized what had happened until we saw the Shepherd coming back with the Retriever, holding the would-be runaway's leash in his mouth and leading him back to the house. Must have been a weird sight for the neighbors. When your dog is smart enough to take your other dog for a walk. I used to have a border collie German Shepherd mix named Ash. We had a 6 foot chain link fence with about an acre sized backyard for him to roam freely. But one day, we couldn't find him and an hour later he was back in the yard. As his escapes happened more often, I decided to watch him from the window. He would stick his front paws in the fence pull himself up so his lower legs went in the fence, then put his front paws on top of the fence and climb over it like a goddamn human. He could do it from the other side as well and never hurt himself doing it. I was so impressed I wasn't even mad at him when he continued doing it for the remainder of his life. He was the smartest animal I ever had. I had a genius ferret. All of my ferrets were smarter than you might expect, but Mia was ridiculous. I have tons of stories, but here's my favorite. My roommates and I used to hang out in a TV room that had doorway with no door, entrance way. Since I wanted the ferret to be able to run around while we were there, I put a baby gate across the exit. It took her 10 seconds to climb it, of course. I then wrapped the gate in carpet runner, so she couldn't scale it. She tried for a long time, but could find anything to get a grip on. Three of us are all kind of marveling at her commitment. She stops trying to climb, and just freezes for a minute. Her eyes panning around the room like she's concocting a scheme. And then she starts eyeballing a shoebox on the other side of the room. Eyes up on the gate. Back to the box. Back to the gate. My buddy says no freaking way. You think she's figured it out? She walks over to the box and starts sliding it across the floor. Stopping every foot or so and checking her progress. Finally gets to the gate. Hops on the box and jumps up and grabs the top of the gate. Whoop she's up and over and dancing down the hallway. I have one ferret whose intelligence honestly scares me, and one ferret who pretty much only has elevator music running through his head at all times. Such strange, wonderful creatures. We used to have this dog when I was younger. She learned how to open our fridge and she would eat almost everything in it. It got so bad that my mom had to buy a childproof lock for our fridge. She ran a daycare so it was always funny when parents asked about it and she had to explain it was for our dog and not the daycare kids. We just had to do this because of our great Dane. The first time he did it he managed to eat an entire turkey leg and 16 hot dogs. That was a fun vet visit. A couple years ago, my grandmother who doesn't walk very well anymore fell while walking in the living room. They have a plot of land so it's pretty big and a couple of my family members live there. But at that time nobody was home. When our dog found out my grandmother fell, he ran all around to look for another person. When he didn't find anyone, he lay down and sat with her until she found the strength to stand up again. She told the whole family and I think we were all a little more thankful he was there for her that day. Cat would not let me go to sleep and insisted I follow her to the kitchen. We had just gotten a new stove with a glass cooktop and didn't realize one of the burners was still on very low. Thanks, kitty. My cat is a freaking sadist. She has learned my work school schedule and if I'm not getting up in the morning, she will step on the button of my CPAP machine, causing me to choke and wake up. If I have a panic attack, she meows until I pick her up and pet her, until I calm down. Quite the alarm clock hug. I have a German Shepherd that will let me know he's about to vomit and needs to be let out by nudging my legs, licking his lips, and then running to the back door. I'm so thankful he's learned to try to hold in his vomit so he won't do it in the house. My cat uses her claw to make her water bowl ring like a bell. I'm apparently the servant being called to refresh the water. 
my cat gets really ashamed when he hacks up a hairball. He will sit there looking very sad until it's cleaned up. Well one day I was at work when he threw one up. And since there was nobody in the house to clean it up for him. He tried to clean cover it up it on his own. He found one of my dirty socks I kicked off the day before. Unrolled it. And then neatly placed it over the hairball. I still ended up stepping in it though. My cat just pukes hers into my shoes. I don't know about intelligent but it was rude. I was sitting at the kitchen table using my laptop and singing. My cat came from across the house, hopped up on the table, and slapped me across the face. I once had a dog that would look both ways before crossing the street. She was legitimately looking for oncoming traffic. One time she started to cross, but then saw a car coming. She backed off, and only crossed after the car passed. On the other hand, I once had a dog who would sunbath in the middle of the street, literally in the middle, as to block traffic in both directions. Was in the middle of packing to move and one of us forgot to close the hamster cage. Hammy gets out and is running around. Cat notices Hammy and makes this loud strange meow that wakes us up and alerts us to the loose hamster. Pretty decent of that cat to not eat the hamster. My chocolate lab woke me up one night barking in my face. I was really mad because he does that. When I got up to see what was up I soon realized I was having a massive heart attack. He saved my life. Thanks Luke. One time my dog had a minor blockage and we took him to the emergency vet to see what we could do. The vet decided to give him some fluids to try to flush it out. Later that night he woke me up by punching me in the face and looked deeply into my eyes as if to say this is going to be a photo finish. Let him outside and he let out the biggest poop I had ever witnessed him take. Thanks for not doing that in the house buddy. On a similar note, my pup woke up the next day after surgery and really wanted to go into our bathroom. We assumed it so she could lay on the cold tiles. Nope. She hobbled into the shower and peed. Our apartment is at the top of stairs and I think she figured this was the easiest option. My cat hid under a comforter when my house caught on fire when I wasn't home. It saved his life because the layers of the comforter acted as an air filter and saved him from dying of smoke inhalation. I know of someone's dog who herded the cats into the basement when the house caught fire. According to the fireman, pets often die in house fires because they go hide in the upstairs bedroom, which they think of as being safe but is actually more likely to get smoky. The dog saved the cat's lives. I'm pretty bad at keeping track of my 3DS game cartridges. Lucky for me, my cat isn't. I once lost my copy of Pokemon X. Nearly destroyed my room trying to find it. A week later, I'm outside exercising and my cat walks up to me, drops the missing game cartridge at my feet and then just walks off like it's no big deal. Your cat took it. He's done with it now. I was trying to teach my husky paw and he wasn't getting it. After about 5 minutes of watching my lab mix comes over and puts his paw in my hand to show his brother how it's done. This happened with my family when we were teaching our lab pup how to shake. Same as poor. We'd have him sit and ask him to shake and our older lab would walk over, sit, and keep putting his paw up in the air as if to say look, I know how to do it, I should get a treat. It was the cutest thing. Our family's border collie would ring the doorbell when he wanted to come in. He was never trained to do it. My dad figures he had learned it from my childhood friends coming over to invite me out to play. My dog got out of yard one time when we weren't home. He went to my parents house that's about a half a mile away and started scratching on the door for my dad. Mine went on his walk route. I'm running barefoot shaking a bag of treats like a madwoman while he's going around acting like everything's fine and dandy. My male Quaker parrot managed to get out of his cage one day and had free roam over the entire house. He stole every pen, pencil, and hair tie he could find and built a nest in the corner of his cage. When we tried to take it down he guarded it with his life and screeched at us. We got him a few boxes of pencils the next day and let him remodel as much as he wanted. Honestly he loved building it and fixing it up. It kept him busy and happy. Our cat, a big Maine Coon, delivers the incoming mail from the letter slot in his teeth, or bats the larger pieces, to where I'm sitting. If a piece is too heavy, he looks at me and growls until I go to the letter slot to finish the delivery job he started. My cat has this thing about drinking water from a bowl. 
She would always tip it over lick it off the floor. We got tired of stepping on a wet floor in socks on the daily so we wedged the water bowl between two heavier objects so that she couldn't tip it over. She realized she could get a running start to jump onto a rolling office chair to create enough force to move the bowl enough to spill it onto the floor. I feel like she has a pretty good grasp on simple physics and using tools to get her way. One of my pet rats was kinda smart. When they would walk around on my bed, they were able to step onto the windowsill. I used to have blinds in front of my window, and the little cord hung over it down to the ground. At the end of the cord there was this little weight, so my pet rat tried to lift the cord upward, but when of course it kept falling back down because of the little weight, he thought for a minute, and then lifted the cord again, put his front paw on the cord, gripped another part of the cord with his teeth, lifted it upward a little further, put his paw on top of it, etc. He managed to get the rest of the cord and little weight on the windowsill. He did that every day after that. I thought that was pretty smart. Also, I used to have two rats that could spin around their axis on command. They knew they would get a snack if they did that. So whenever I opened a bag of potato chips, for myself, they started spinning around like 10 times hoping they would get some. I never give my rats chips, for the record. My cat knows that old grocery bags are what I scoop his crap into, so when I slip up and forget to clean his litter box he drags one in there to let me know. My corgi helps hold open inside doors for my three-legged dog, named Wobbles. We adopted when he realized Wobbles couldn't follow him due to the doors shutting behind him. The smartest thing I've seen my cat do is referee when my girlfriend's kitten was trying to fight her older cat. We were initially terrified because my cat was found as a stray and you can tell that he's had his butt kicked in a few fights back in the day. When we adopted him, when he'd hear the other cats start play fighting, he'd rush out to be there too. He weighed about twice as much as the next biggest cat, and we knew almost nothing about his personality at the time, so of course this filled us with terror. Well, we followed him out into the next room, and he had just managed to perch himself on the coffee table, above the action, and was just watching, when the older cat switched from playing to getting genuinely exasperated with the kitten. He tagged in so the other cat could get away. For months he would do this, so we figured he may have helped raise kittens when he was stray. I have a blood parrot, smartest fish I've ever had. His tank contains half sand and half white pebbles. However he's very particular with where and how the floor of his environment looks like. For example, he'll move plants towards certain places if he doesn't like how the ground looks beneath them. He'll place pebbles on the sand part, and make a sand pile in the pebbles area. But it isn't random. If you remove a pebble from a little pile, he'll notice it and place another one. If you distort a little sand pile, he'll build more on top of the remains. He'll spend about 3 days carving out a small hole just to see his reflection at the bottom of the tank. If you lightly dusty the empty space with sand, he'll come swimming out of his house, collect the misplaced sand in his mouth and literally throw it at you against the aquarium glass. He's a very grumpy fish, but his personality is amazing. My blood parrot would greet everyone who walked in the front door. It wasn't a feed me thing, because he didn't do it when you walked past randomly it was just when you were coming home. Super smart little dude, and a dedicated decorator also the fake plants all had certain spots and if you moved them an inch he would notice immediately and drag them with his mouth back to their special spots. I've got an African grey parrot. I also have a large mirror that leans against a wall. He once walked up to it, studied the other bird intensely after fluffing up and acting like a badass. Then he decided to look behind the mirror for the other bird. Except you could see the confusion when he popped his head behind there only to see nothing. He then looked at me as if I caused this black magic. Then he proceeded to walk behind the mirror and poke his head around so he could look into the mirror while standing behind it. He then looked at me quizzically, studied the mirror, popped his head behind it, popped it back out to confirm, then just walked away. Now, he seems to check himself out in the mirror every time he waddles past it. I swear he knows it's him in the mirror and nit just that particular one. If he's in the bathroom with me, he acts the same and appears to be studying himself whenever he gets the chance. Knowing that the reflection in a mirror is you is one of the rare abilities in the animal kingdom and one which few animals possess the required intelligence to understand. Dolphins, pigs, some of the higher level primates, that's about it. Most other animals can't put the connection together. 
He also used to taunt the cat and get him to jump on top of the bird's cage. Then he'd yell for us so we'd grab the cat and scold him. Then the bird would laugh. Happened until the cat learned not to jump on top of the cage. Now, he's scared of the bird and will turn around if he sees the bird walking towards him. Haha, <laughs> my parents have an African grey that would taunt my brother's dog. African greys are really good at mimicking voices so, using my brother's voice, he'd call the dog, Sable, Sable, come here, and once the dog showed up, get the frick out then he'd laugh his butt off. When my son was a baby, he was teething really bad, constantly running a fever and cranky, we gave him lots of the Tylenol suspension drops. One morning I had the baby wedged in the recliner while I was looking for something, of course he was crying. Our dog, looked at the baby, ran upstairs, came back down a few seconds later with the Tylenol, dropped it in the recliner where it rolled to the baby, then the dog turned to me and barked until I picked it up. I brought the quiet juice human, use it already. My roommate's dog, we were taking care of another dog for a few days and he was staying at our house. They got along well enough, but visitor dog kept trying to play and resident dog never wanted to. One evening, resident dog walks into the living room to find visitor dog is in her favorite spot on the couch. She immediately barks, drops into a play bow, and starts jumping around to play with him. Visitor dog gets super excited that she finally wants to play and abandons the couch. Resident dog drops the play acting and reclaims her rightful throne. If all of the spots on the couch were taken, my dog would scratch the door to go out and when someone gets up he would take their spot. My golden retriever leaves a shoe on the bed, without fail, for my wife or I to find if we are both gone at the same time. My theory is that she did it once, and we came home, so now she does it every time we leave to ensure that we come back, like a doggy superstition. After doing this for years, my wife had to leave the state for a week. My first day back from work, there was a shoe on the bed, normal. After my second day back, wife is still gone, there were three shoes on the bed. After my third day returning from work alone, every shoe and boot in the house was laid out on the bed and couches, and all of my wife's dirty socks were in a bowl. It may not be the smartest thing she's ever done, but it really made me think about how she thinks. <laughs> Who was the dumbest person you ever met? How did you know? I was a cook a few years ago and this particular busy night we ran out of lobster mac and cheese. This one waitress could not understand how this was possible and just kept nagging and nagging in disbelief. I got annoyed to the point that I told her the reason for this was that there was a shortage of people with small enough hands to milk lobsters tiny nipples, hence a worldwide shortage of lobster milk to make that dish. I had to come clean with her when she started telling this to customers and they demanded to speak with a manager. I went to high school with this guy who probably had about 3 brain cells. He was a stereotypical redneck. Here's a list of the stupid crap he did that I can name off the top of my head. During a music class where we had a work period for some project, he asked the teacher if he could go make up a test he had missed earlier that week for a different class. The teacher said yes. He left the room, went into the band's instrument storage room, took a nap. Then got really peed at the teacher for not letting him make up the test. In the same music class, we had to use GarageBand to create a soundtrack for something, and there were some guidelines we had to follow. Instead of following the guidelines, this kid just filled the timeline with random loops, admitted to doing that, then tried to argue with the teacher about his grade for the project, 20%. Tried to become a SoundCloud rapper. He recorded his mixtape in the school bathroom, then deleted it about 3 weeks later because everyone made fun of him for it. The only line I actually remember was from a diss track where he said roasted in a pan of ovens. Started fights with 4 different people and got his butt kicked 3 times. The one guy who didn't beat him up was 2 years younger, 6 in slash 15 cm shorter, and probably about 80 lbs slash 36 kg lighter. One fight was started because someone made an incest joke about him and his cousin. One was because someone made fun of him for the previously mentioned line from his mixtape. One was because someone was calling him by his rapper name, his initials. Which apparently was disrespectful because the other guy didn't know his middle name. And one was because he was flirting with a girl who already had a boyfriend. Bragged about getting his very own tractor, but refused to show anyone any pictures of it. A few weeks later, someone finally convinced him to show pictures. 
It was a freaking lawnmower. Got caught watching P during class on his school laptop. Responded by punching it and breaking the screen. Tried out for the baseball team one year. Couldn't go back for a fly ball without falling on his butt. Missed every pitch during batting practice. And got mad at the coach for not letting him on the team. My friend wanted me to try whole wheat pasta. I explained that I'm allergic to wheat. She said to try it because it's not wheat. It's whole wheat. Just say that you are whole allergic to whole wheat. My former boss was worried that the island of Manhattan would sink with all the extra visitors for New Year's and the ball dropping. She thought islands float and when she found out that wasn't true she thought it was so funny that she told everyone the story. She was later fired for withholding a pay raise from someone on her team because he didn't accept her romantic advances. He had the texts to prove it. I remember a guy I knew in middle school who put money into a vending machine and then his item didn't come out. Then he put more money into the machine and two of the item he wanted came out. He then exclaimed alright 241. Man, I remember a guy in middle school who would put money in the vending machine and then sell the item for less money because he thought that what making a profit was. One time my now ex-girlfriend was watching Mori Povich. One of those paternity test episodes with the classic you are not the father moment. And she turns to me and says if we ever have a baby and I found out I'm not the mother, I'll kill you. Thankfully we didn't end up reproducing. You just randomly bring home a baby. Congratulations, dear. We've had a child. I was working retail at the time. And this lady walks in and asks me to tell her when it is quarter after 10am. She needs to catch a bus. We were slow so I obliged. 10:15 a.m. rolls around and I tell her so she drops her stuff and runs out to get the bus. Five minutes later she comes back it's scowling and she then lectures me on how to tell time. How much is a quarter 25 cents? So why would you tell me a quarter after 10 or is 10:15 a? It's 10:25 a.m. Tell her that her bus is late today. It will be in at three dollars to eleven. I was taught 11th grade science by a teacher who believed tattoos were genetically inherited. He had just purchased a new, high powered BB gun. We had just finished shooting it in the backyard when he points the barrel at my face and pulls the trigger several times. I tell him to stop being an idiot and he just laughs and says it's not loaded then the moron puts the barrel in his mouth and pop. Shoots a BB right through his tongue and into his uvula. I asked a temp at work to weigh a couple of lever arch files for postage. She came back and told me they were 65 kilograms. I asked if it were possible that it was 6.5 kilograms but she insisted it wasn't. We argued about it for a good 5 minutes. It wasn't until I asked her how much she weighed. 59 kg. That did finally twig that these two small folders couldn't possibly weigh more than her. Had a girl I worked with at McDonald's. Sweet as could be but denser than the concrete the store sat on. Two moments stand out to me. 1. She thought the Great Wall of China was in Arizona. 2. She firmly believed north was whatever direction you were looking at the moment. I had a boss who told me that she never kept leftovers from a meal because that's how polio got started. All that pre-cooked food in the supermarket. I tease all polio. A girl in my class in middle school genuinely thought people had landed on the sun. Her explanation for this belief was to insist that the moon and sun are made of the same stuff. Well, yeah, protons, neutrons, and electrons. You can build a lot of wacky crap with that, though. A friend of mine is a sweet guy but is overweight and balding and quite frankly, not very attractive in the face. Well, one day he lets us know that he has met a girl and she might be the one. He's in his late 20s for reference. Well, I've met some of the jewels he's hooked up with in the past so I wasn't expecting too much. Finally meet this girl and she is drop dead gorgeous and has a body that is incredible. I talk to her for a while and she is super friendly and outgoing. I'm stoked for my boy. He found the best he's ever gonna find. Anyway, the night progresses and the new couple starts talking about their plans for an upcoming trip to New Mexico and she starts telling us how excited she is because she has never gone to another country before. I laughed a bit and realized she was dead serious. My friend just looked at me and shook his head and I knew that he knew she was dumb as a freaking rock but she was his dumb freaking rock. FWIW. He helped her get her passport. I worked with a woman who would be constantly on her phone, 
but if she set it down she'd think it would be someone else's. She legitimately spent 20 minutes looking for her phone, believing that the phone in front of her was another co-worker's, then finally did it dawn on her that it was hers. Don't know how she survived 50 plus years. When I was in the air force I was the lead trainer certifier in my unit. When a new person would show up, I'd watch them do the job, answer any out of the ordinary questions etc. And when I felt they were ready, I'd sign off saying they were qualified. This all happened after they finished a 6 week school learning the job. The 73 troops I trained took on average, 3 days to complete this phase. Then there was that one guy, I took him under my wing, non-stop for an entire month. He'd mess something up one day and we'd correct it, no big deal. The next, he'd get it right, but get something else wrong. Then on the following day, mess up on the first thing we had corrected. Bear in mind that he has a step by step checklist in his hand that lists everything to do and in what order to do it. After a month of this, I figured there was nothing I could do for him. Maybe it was my teaching method. So I handed him over to my supervisor. They spent another 3 weeks together until he was finally certified. A month and a half to learn what should have taken 3 days. Personally I really liked the guy, had a good heart, didn't give up after the setbacks, and probably the funniest non-comedian I've ever met. He was just a bit dense when it came to the job. The job was refueling jets, which is really about 2 degrees harder than filling your car. A chimp could do it and probably learn in less time. Miss ya buddy, hope you're still doing well. I like how nice you are about it and how you acknowledge that he was a good bloke. A lot of people just disparage those who aren't as skilled as them. Good on you. A girl in my art class in high school thought there was just a part of the cow called meat when we explained meat is the muscles she freaked out and became vegetarian. A girl in my sophomore year of high school who thought there were 6 months in a year. She was really nice, but very surprised and confused when we tried to set her right. White girl didn't think she could get pregnant because the guy was Mexican. Swear on my life. Car dashboard reads 40 miles to E. My car says in 40 miles, we'll be going east. Half of my science class thought that the International Space Station was just some building on the ground. Ah yes, the International Land Station. My wife wanted to meet an old friend from school she hadn't seen for about 20 years. We went to dinner and he brought his wife, who he met two months ago, who was a male entertainer, and her two kids. He was white, she was black, and he spent the whole night trying to start crap with people for making racist comments about their relationship behind their back. They weren't. When we finally got into talking, he told me about 9 jump points that exist to get off the earth. I thought to myself oh boy, a flat earther, I've never met a real one before, but no, that's not what he was talking about. That would have been so much better than what he was talking about. He said there are 9 jump points on earth that are essentially wormholes to other planets, and that there is one in New York City that goes to Mars, and that the American government has already colonized Mars and is hiding it from the people, and he was dead serious. I know a guy who vaped mercury on a dare. Out of everything in this thread, this one's the most fricked up. My friend and ex-roommate legitimately believed that cats only had one hole, as in they peed and pooped and had intercourse etc through one hole. I understand that some birds, reptiles, and fish have clicker, but mammals. He owns three cats. He also refuses to neuter them because he thinks it's unhealthy. They're constantly going in and out of heat, miserably yowling and writhing all over the apartment, which didn't allow pets. They're inside cats. Dude has no business owning a pet of any kind. They thought dinosaurs were fictional. I knew a grown woman who thought that dinosaurs never existed, were a hoax that is being perpetuated through time by scientists trying to be in on the joke. Her main argument for this point, if dinosaur bones are real, tell me why it's only ever a paleontologist that keeps finding the bones. I know a guy who thinks the special tea he drinks negates the negative health effects of his pack a day smoking habit. I remember proofreading a paper for a freshman my roommate had the hots for. It was on Jonathan Swift's A Modest Proposal, but somehow this freshman didn't catch that it was satire. The opening lines of the paper are burned into my memory. Eating children would not be a good thing to do. In fact, we could say it would be bad. 
girl in my class asked the professor if other countries have moons. 2. My best friend asked me this when I moved to Europe. She asked if I could see the moon there, or if it only existed for the USA. My first ever girlfriend thought you had to study for an STD test. She was really pretty. I currently work with this person. Didn't know detergent existed other than Tide. Was washing her clothes with Downy and was wondering why stains weren't coming out. Made a legal right turn from left lane in front of two different co-workers at different times. At the age of 20 had already totaled 7 cars. Got customer complaints that she was constantly on phone and tried to hide it when manager was near. Left a nasty lint roller on the counter covered in fake hair. I hate fish. I've never had fish other than fish sticks. Asked how old I am. The next day asked if I was alive in the 90s. Doesn't know own address or what city she lives in. Didn't believe me that California has snow. Described how she made tacos once and she put water in it and it turned into meat soup. Customer said they lived in the boondocks. She handed a post-it to co-worker that said why do people here live in the boombox. Australia is part of the United States she got that and Alaska confused somehow. Thought Haitian was half Asian, half black. Co-worker brought in a cake and he told new girl he made it. She believed him despite the price tag and retail packaging. These are all things she's said to me or within earshot of me. I wish I were making this up. A girl at my high school didn't know you could get pregnant from semen. I had a guy at work tell me that Benjamin Franklin was the 100th president because he's on the $100 bill. I mean, we're only on the 45th, so he could be right one day. We hired a girl a couple years ago. I told her where the manager's office was her first day. Second day, she asked me where the manager's office was, so I walked her to the door. Third day, she asks me where it is again. Our manager chewed out the girl who trained our new recruit for not teaching the job properly. The trainer pulled out her phone and showed the manager a picture of the girl wearing the uniform backwards and said look at this. This is untrainable. New girl got fired about 3 weeks later for stealing the product because she thought she got it for free because she was an employee. A friend of mine still thinks cancer is made up by Big Pharma. I live in southern Spain I once met a girl from the US who was here on some kind of exchange program when I asked her how did she like Spain so far she said I am loving it I just don't know why the plane took so long to get here. I mean we are just a bit below Mexico. I don't know where he the flight was so long. Then I told her that we were in Europe and she didn't believe me. Her reply was Europe. It can't be everyone speaks Spanish so we must be somewhere near Mexico for sure. She was in uni I still don't know how or why. I'm Spanish too. The amount of times I've experienced this is stupid. At least three people I've met thought Spain was in Mexico. I have geography in third period and this kid thinks there's two Floridas. Florida. Florida. It checks out. My ex-sister-in-law is hands down the dumbest person I've ever encountered. There's literally a plethora of freaking insanely stupid things she's said over the years. But I'll use the one that almost made me slap the taste out of her mouth. I had my my first son back in 2001 and while I was pregnant she asked me if I was going to breastfeed. To which I replied that I was. She then asked even if it's a girl and I said of course. She then proceeded to tell me that it's perfectly fine to breastfeed boys but doing so with girls is creepy and could make the child a lesbian. Because they get the feel of a breast and will remember it and want that intimately. To say that I was stunned by her thought process is an understatement. I asked her what she thought people did before formula was invented and she said cow's milk. And before bottles were invented it was a rag soaked in cow's milk. Side note, she had three daughters and wouldn't allow her husband to change their diapers or bathe them. I worked with a woman with one daughter. Not only did she not let her husband bathe her daughter or change diapers, but she never left her alone with him. She claimed all men were perverts by default. They couldn't help it. I've always wondered what happened to her in her past to make her think that. It's sad. While visiting the Lincoln Memorial, I ran into an older couple discussing the inscription of the Gettysburg Address on the walls. The woman asked the man what this was in reference to and if it was about America and the man said something to the effect of no this couldn't be about America. We never had any slaves here in our country. It must be about what happened in country X. These were two Americans. 
I went to school with a girl that legitimately thought 9 stroke 11 was done by German Nazis. Someone asked me if Japanese was a real language. In high school. Twice. Nah. It was just made up by really dedicated weebs. Was working at a grocery store over a decade ago. I wouldn't call the kid dumb. Because he just didn't know. It's more of a funny thing. He was new and the manager asked him to face the store when he asked what he could do. Facing means you make sure the aisles look nice and neat and that the product is pulled forward and visibly facing you as you walk down the aisle. The kid couldn't be found until someone told the manager one of the workers was just standing in the parking lot facing the store. I will never forget that. To be fair, he did follow instructions literally. She had a mug from Disneyland with the name Ronald on it. She thought you just picked a mug of the name you like and not your actual freaking name. I love this and want it to be a thing. You have been visited by the snake of great corn. You will be blessed with corn for eternities to come. But only if you comment corn me up. Snake if you are new to the channel. You can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check out another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.